Hello, we're back for the last uh, uh, session, the last three talks of the day one of uh, of the conference. Uh, you are in the Ask Your Developer track. And today we're really glad to have with us uh, Mark. So Mark, if you can join uh, the stage. So Mark will represent Jerry Cuomo because Jerry could not be here at the exact time we asked him to be uh, today, but we still wanted to have uh, Jerry explaining what he uh, uh, his vision about uh, AI and APIs and automation. So, uh, so yeah, Mark here. Hello, Mark. How are you? Great, great. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So, you will represent uh, Jerry Cuomo for the questions because Jerry has sent us a, a recording of his talk, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, so thank you. I mean, Jerry did not want to miss this meeting. Unfortunately, he had something pressing to attend to. Um, I work very closely with Jerry, so I agreed to uh, to cover for him. So I'm, I'm happy to be here, and Jerry was very happy for the invitation to join you all. Yeah, that's good. You have his back. So we will have the video uh, launching, and then uh, we'll join uh, um, uh, for the question with Mark. So yeah, enjoy the presentation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jerry Cuomo. I'm an IBM fellow and the CTO for automation at IBM. And it's my pleasure to join you here at API Days. And during this time together, I'd like to share with you my excitement for the topic of AI-powered automation. You see, there's a symbiotic relationship between APIs and automation. And in short, automation is one of the major benefactors of a well-thought-out API strategy. And as I like to say, you can't automate an enterprise until that enterprise is programmable via APIs. So during this talk, I'll be sharing IBM's AI-powered automation strategy and directions. And hopefully with this glimpse, you're going to start to share our excitement and choose to partner with us at IBM to help you apply automation in your enterprise as one stop along your API journey. Now we're hearing from many of you that this is the year of automation and that the pandemic has greatly propelled all of our digital journeys. From ordering a pizza to visiting your doctor via telemedicine and these WebEx Zoom oriented conferences, businesses are now all in on digital, digital through APIs, and that's never gonna change. And there is an analogy that I like to use here. You see, I recently test drove and bought a Tesla Model 3. And it dawned on me that cars have become computers. They are programmable via APIs. And with self-driving and auto-assist models, the programs that use these APIs are actually AI-powered automation applications. They use machine learning, natural language processing, and computer vision to run these cars autonomously. So we started to ask ourselves, are businesses much different? You see, your businesses, thanks to innovations and topics that you've adopted from conferences like API Days, have become computers. So now, to complement your API efforts, we're putting them to work by adding automation powered by AI with a new North Star. And that North Star is to make businesses more autonomous, more self-driving, or perhaps more, more realistically, auto assist mode where human workers and software bots can collaborate to create a hybrid workforce. So with that, welcome to API days and let's dive into our AI powered automation story. And let's start with a simple definition. Automation is not new. In fact, automation technology has been liberally applied to businesses for generations with early patents of closed loop automation systems dating back to the dawn of the industrial era with feedback loops used to regulate the steam generated by early steam engines. And if you read about those innovations, you will see an uncanny similarity to how modern intelligent automation systems work today. We use this automation dial as a simple way to define intelligent automation. The dial represents the process of automation as defined through a set of distinct phases that are continuously occurring. The intelligent automation process is data-driven, collecting data and sensing events from surrounding business systems. From this data, patterns are discovered, which provide insight and a foundation for automated decision-making. Automated decisions can take the form of rules, custom logic, or driven by machine learning models. 
Now, based on a confidence level, these decisions can trigger automated actions, which start to augment human actions with machine actions. The results of this process can be profound, eliminating repetitive mundane work from our day to day and giving time back to us humans to focus on things that matter more to our business. So we've defined automation as a data-driven process that involves discovery, decisions, actions, and continuous optimization. AI-powered automation results in actionable intelligence with resilient delivery of IT and business operations with speed, lower cost, and improved user experience. So one might ask what sorts of things can an enterprise automate? The answer, just about everything and anything. So here is an example of the sorts of tasks that are prime targets for AI-powered automation in financial services. Things like customer engagement, origin and verification of tasks like evaluating credit, retail bank examples include loan processing and credit decisioning, and the list goes on. Let me share a quick example. A North American bank has noticed a sharp increase in email-based inquiries during the pandemic. They're on a pace to receive over 1 million emails in a year. And they do things like make requests, uh, ask questions, and file complaints. So processing unstructured emails is a time-consuming and financial burden for the bank, with hundreds of employees working on this mundane and repetitive process. This affects the bank's responsiveness and overall quality of service to its customers. That's not good. So the bank decided to employ AI-powered automation in the form of intelligent document processing to automate the capturing, classification, and extraction of information from those unstructured emails. A specially trained classifier model now recognizes specific bank products and categorizes those emails. Now, automating the receipt of email, the categorization, and the automatic responses to select emails. The result is a 90% reduction in handling times and 94% more accurate responses. That's pretty cool. But more importantly, not just the cost savings, but the bank was able to use natural language sentiment and provide more targeted responses to those customers that need it more. And for those cases where applying the human touch really mattered. So perhaps detecting that an email was coming from a relative that lost a loved one to COVID. Now the bank can provide that excellent personalized touch, fast, targeted, and understanding the needs and emotions of their customers. So really that's the power of AI automation. Now that we've defined and shared an example of AI powered automation, let me take a deeper dive across each of these phases of automation and examine how we're applying AI to truly differentiate how enterprises do work with our IBM automation product family. So we'll start with the discovery phase. With discovery, it's really about figuratively turning the lights on in the enterprise so you can see what's happening. And we have three technology areas that really help discovery. And so here we go. We asked our customers what activities their integration developers spent most time on. And the answer came back mapping data and understanding the API is available. So we've created the App Connect Smart Mapper. And the way I think about this is it's almost like a dating app. So it really matches a developer to the perfect API and also helps you map the correct data fields. So using an API catalog, we index and score based on the needs of an API, what inputs are the most likely to fit, right? So as you see in this screen example, this breakthrough provides suggestions given a Salesforce API call, what are the best inputs to that call based on other APIs you have, thereby making it very efficient and quick using AI assistance for a developer to create these automation task flows. Process mining allows you to discover the precise areas to focus your time and energy around automation. The way this works is you instrument key business systems associated with a business process. And what you're looking at here is a, a map, a process map that would occur after you've collected data from those systems for some time. And what this shows is the tasks and the subtasks involved in that process. 
and how many times those tasks are called and the duration of time. So by analyzing this with this tool, you can start to get a view of what tasks might be ripe to be replaced by automated bots. What you could also do is use that data collected almost as a digital twin of the system. This allows you to start running simulations and what if scenarios where you can replace tasks with automation, where you can then also submit what you think the task should be using a BPMN uh, notation. So you submit the process map and what you get back is, for example, green boxes are tasks that match the process map. Red are tasks that did not quite match. So they were exceptions. So again, you look at this, this all becomes input for an informed decision about how to automate. And then we have discovery through actionable observability. And based on two recent acquisitions of Instana and Turbonomic, you now have not only the ability to observe systems, and what you're looking at here is a dependency view of a business application and all of the, the subcomponents or the microservices involved with that. So not only can you observe the performance and behavior of these components, but you could also take action using Turbonomic. And the, the, it's a one-two punch that's very effective for turning the lights on and observing the behavior of your application and looking perhaps with circle there in red as opportunities to maybe provision more of those microservices to improve performance, right? So again, informing through data what tasks, what components, what areas of your system could be optimized through automation. Now on to decide. The IBM automation platform is comprised of three dominant suites around automation. One is business automation, the other is IT automation, and the third is integration and APIs. Now these suites sit on an automation shared services collection, and these services provide things like process mining, observability, RPA, Watson AI lifecycle, rules and workflow to these capabilities. Now, a customer can use these capabilities alone. So you can use business automation or IT automation. However, when you use them together, you have this magic of shift right decisions occurring. So there's a multiplier effect. Let me explain that through this example. And I'll talk about this as if these are people, but most likely these could be bots as well. So let's say an IT operations bot notices an infrastructure node failure. So it's kind of on the discovery phase and triggering events to a service reliability bot that realizes and uh, assesses and correlates that that outage affects one of four payment service instances that had 500 sessions affected. Right? Again, now some decisions could be made on data coming from application and process awareness where, let's say, 86 of the transactions that were part of those sessions are valued at 300K and affect 50 accounts. Well, then more information could be brought forward on business operations side where a more informed decision about how to interact with those 50 accounts based on, for example, their loyalty, maybe there was a diamond customer in there or gold, and also the value maybe of, let's say, a loan form being processed or information, uh, products in a shopping cart. Right? Maybe uh, a cart had valuable merchandise in it. And this could now really use to prioritize and drive a set of automated actions around customer service where the affected customers could be digitally or physically by human contacted and offered alternative solutions. Now, this is a great example of making decisions go from reactive to proactive. And the example specifically is around Watson AI Ops and the new change risk model that's part of Watson AI Ops. And the way I like to think about this is you're a operations leader and you're about to push out a new application or change, a configuration change. And you're about to push the change out and you get a Slack message from this change risk model saying that the baseball ticket you have tomorrow night well, you probably won't make the game because when you push that change out, there is a 95% chance that there will be an outage based on the configuration that you, you have there. If you click here, 
you can see an explanation of why we feel that way and perhaps fix, you know, fix those changes so that uh, you don't miss the game. Anyway, you get the hopefully spirit of my example. But with this model, the way it works is it is cleverly able to combine insights from both structured and unstructured data. You know, for, for example, change history and incident history and link those together to create a ground truth that becomes input to training data of this model, right? So that's going on in real time as an approved change comes through. It can be assessed in real time whether it's a risky change and act proactively like I described in my example. So now let's talk about the ACT phase. The gold standard for automated actions is robotic process automation. And we're evolving RPA to intelligent orchestration. So going from simple scripts to employing techniques around AI like advanced natural language understanding. IBM recently acquired WDG Automation, and we've been working on infusing RPA with, with AI. So you can see some examples here. So things like machine learning models for document classification, also being able to use computer vision to recognize when you say press a button, it can actually see the button on the screen versus having to point like how many pixels to the right and left the button actually is. So using techniques around AI for improving classic RPA. While classic intelligent RPA works just fine, we were not content. So working with our research group, we've made a real breakthrough in making automation more consumable and accessible to a wider enterprise audience. In other words, you no longer need to be a data scientist to apply AI power automation. So it's now literally for everyone. And today we're introducing Watson Orchestrate, which is the technology that makes automation accessible to the masses by allowing end users to automate new business outcomes without programming. Now, as this technology was growing up in our research lab, its codename was Project Verdi, named after the great Italian composer of the early 1800s. And when I think of Verdi, I think of orchestra leader. And that was an appropriate start for this orchestration technology that intelligently sequences automations into new workflows on the fly. So you wouldn't be wrong to think of it as a workflow engine of sorts. But unlike today's workflow engines, our Watson Orchestrate has workflows that contain business context, which includes a company assigned identity, so think employee serial number, such that it can securely interact with business systems, while also interacting with end users in the business tools that they use every day, like Slack, Microsoft Teams, or email. Oh, and it also remembers past business interactions to maintain collaboration over time to get subsequent work done faster. So to complement this intelligent orchestration technology, we're also introducing a set of skills. Think Alexa skills, but for the enterprise. So these skills are like the instruments of the band that are strung together to form the music. And we provide a set of out-of-the-box business skills of many of today's popular business applications. And enterprises could also create new skills to make the system even more powerful. So Watson Orchestrate uses AI models with natural language understanding as its brains to intelligently orchestrate workflows on the fly. And specifically, these models are used to score, select, and sequence the execution of the best fit skills. And this allows the achievement of a desired business outcome. And a quick, uh, maybe a Alexa analogy will help. So with Alexa, you can install a weather skill and ask, what the weather is. And there's not a lot of orchestration going on there. But if Watson Orchestrate was being used by Alexa, you would be able to call on multiple skills, sequence these skills together to get this greater outcome. So for example, if you had an English to French translation skill, you can ask for the weather in French. And orchestration would occur by sequencing the selection and execution of weather and French resulting in hearing the weather in French. All right, let me share another example of how this breakthrough technology can be brought to an enterprise setting. Now, imagine a sales executive working with Watson Orchestrate to build a sales strategy by using skills that access information in Salesforce, Workday, and ServiceNow. The sales exec who has no programming skills can email or Slack a message to an instance of Watson Orchestrate that has been trained with a set of sales skills. 
So in the email, she asked to alert all account reps that have customers with subscriptions up for renewal, where those subscribers reported problems with our service. Now, Watson Orchestrate would understand the intent of that natural language request in the email and call on skills from Outlook, Salesforce, Workday, and ServiceNow and produce email replies to the impacted account reps with a churn alert. So I think you get the picture here. A pretty powerful way to use AI-powered automation and put it in just about anyone's hands without programming. And that's pretty cool. Okay, so in summary, we at IBM, like Gardner, believe that this is the year of automation. And we similarly define hyper-automation to be AI-powered automation, which we define as a data-driven closed-loop system that discovers, decides, drives actions, and is continuously optimizing. I also shared some of the ways we are differentiating IBM automation by cleverly applying AI across this automation dial. So we use AI to discover APIs and assist in mapping data involved in orchestrating API tasks, process mining to turn the lights on and allow users to target areas most ripe for automation, and actionable observability to monitor and drive actions based on IT and business telemetry. We talked about the benefits of a converged IT and business automation platform as being able to in real time understand the business impact of an IT incident and drive impactful automations. Then we shared how AI ops will allow IT operators not to miss another baseball game due to an IT incident by going to a more proactive and predictive decision model with our AI ops change risk machine learning model. And last but not least, we introduced Watson Orchestrate to put automation in the hands of anyone without programming to easily automate actions across business and IT with natural language processing. So for more information, please go to ibm.com slash automate. Oh, and I have a podcast on this topic. So to find it, go to Google and search for Jerry and Art of Automation. Well, thank you very much for listening. And I hope you are now as excited as we are about the art of the possible behind IBM's AI-powered automation strategy and how APIs is where it all starts. And with a strong API strategy, you can enable a very strong automation strategy where you can better manage your cost, you can increase speed of delivery, you can increase your quality, and probably most important, you can create delightful user experiences that can almost read the mind of your users and predict and deliver what they need and want. That's pretty cool. Anyway, enjoy the rest of API days and Jerry out. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. I hope you can listen to us. And, and so we have Mark with us uh, for some question. So uh, we have a first question about citizen developers. Does API, does AI, sorry, I, I can't hear this. Does AI automation powered by API enable non-developers to participate into finding KPIs for the company? Uh, yes, that is a fantastic question. That is exactly the role that we're after right now is we're into the low code or no code programming bits that are anything from natural language processing to be able to match into APIs. So a business user can actually create a KPI in their, their own business metric and see how it can actually propagate and be effective in the IT environment. So um, it's exactly what we're after, trying to tie the IT group to our business users because that's constantly a problem that that the two silos never actually communicate with each other. Uh, another question: How do you handle API discovery? Ah, great question. Another great question. So, uh, as Jerry showed in the uh, demonstration, there is something that we have that's called an API mapper, where you can list out the different properties that you have, and through our indexing and collation of all the APIs that are available in this library, it will match what is possibly the best type of API that we have, that you may have already available in your library and expose that. And then you can click and then complete however you need to that reusable asset. So it'll save a tremendous amount of time and effort as you move forward. 
So now a question more from me, but is it the continuation of API harmony or is it, new, is it a new way to discover APIs? Oh, it, it's good. It's actually a continuation and an, uh, an evolution, I would call it actually, of API Harmony. So yes, you've been, you've been following for quite some time. That's, that's great. API Harmony was great, but this is, this is new and improved with, uh, you know, the, the whipped cream and cherry on top. So absolutely. Good question. Yeah. We organized conference on API and API management since 2012. So we've seen this moving. Right? Oh, indeed. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> So uh, what are the countermeasures against, uh, let's say, biases into API automation? Oh, um, so it, it's really, that, that's a really deep question that we could go into all kinds of different methods and, and thought patterns. But if you think about it, automation has been around, I mean, for for a very, very, very long time. And as you see how technology continues to develop and, and create new opportunities and actually new jobs for folks to be able to to be able to create new innovations in how to actually augment things. And as Jerry said, um, in one of the examples that we've seen is uh, we've been working with a large uh, bank and, and they have seen that APIs and creation of chatbots and, and things like that have made some people actually feel better because if, if say you have, have lost your job or something like that and you're late on a payment and you can actually work with a machine or something that isn't going to, to judge you, right? That was what survey results came back is they felt they were judged sometimes by people. Um, and then on the reverse side, sometimes they need that extra personal touch. So a, a bereavement situation or something like that where you're working with somebody maybe that's not even um, inclined, you know, with a mobile device or, or knows how to use technology as well. You can tell as they go through some of the automation processes. Again, I'm using a chatbot, but there's a lot of different uh, examples like this. But giving that extra personal touch to those people really can satisfy somebody um, in, a, in a big way. And I've, I've seen it personally, actually. Yeah, some people mentioning the current, let's say, backlash that Amazon is having by maybe have have fired people via bot. So this is why the people talk about that uh, these biases. Uh, so maybe um, uh, maybe a, la a last question here, uh, uh, a last question about you know uh, auto automation. So is it more automation? like full automation once we set up all the KPIs and, and stuff with it that we need to follow, it's, it's, it runs by itself? Or is it mostly at our stage, you know, augmented human decision? It's absolutely augmented human decision. So, of course, there's going to be some general, very, you know, low level type of uh, or easy tasks that we could automate to complete, you know, not have to worry about it and move on to other things. However, I mean, study after study shows that automation with humans, so partners, and that's why we actually started down the path of uh, with Watson Orchestrate to be a digital employee or digital twin or digital peer. We we're trying to really come up with that because the two working together side by side always works better. I mean, you think about when you're sitting in your office and you're doing peer programming and stuff and how much more effective that is it's the same sort of philosophy. That's exactly what we're after here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's all the question we had. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you very much for having us. Uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. And if you have any follow-ups, please uh, reach out to us on uh, Twitter or LinkedIn. We're happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Or you can go directly on the booth at, of IBM directly in the in the Expo Village of the, of the platform. Thank you, Mark. Have a good one. Beautiful. Now, thank you. And now we have Rob.